I'm Bert Kinister, and this is Tips and Tales. You say you've been looking for that super state stroke and you don't know how to get it. This is shot number one off of the 60 minute workout, the single most important shot in pool in my opinion. I've used this to straighten out my stroke. I shot it over 100,000 times, 1,000 times a day for a month, four months. Neil Spion, the current champion of the world, nine ball champion of the world, been coming to me since he was 17. I told him to go back to Holland when he first saw him and learn how to do this shot. He told the girl I live with, Orianna Strickland, that he shot it 750,000 to a million times before he came back. Now I'm telling you, a hundred times a day, three times a week, a hundred times a day, every day if you can do it, it's going to change the way you play pool forever. This is the shot. You create a long straight end in the corner pocket, and it needs to be straight in. You're going to shoot this ball. You're going to shoot this three ball in the corner pocket. Now, that's a given me. Even though long straight ends are probably the hardest shot in the world. Johnny Archer missed this shot on the History Channel. But the emphasis of this shot is what the cue ball does after the ball goes in the hole. You want to hit the cue ball in the exact center. To do that, you need to aim the upper radius of the cue tip at the cue ball. The exact, at the center of the cue ball. The exact center cannot be struck with the crown of the tip because the rail gets in the way. No matter how flat you get, you still have to elevate a little bit and it's the upper radius of the cue tip that makes contact with the center of the ball. You want that ball to slide to the three ball. This is the first that slides. To, it has no axis of rotation. You are going to find that your cue ball, even if you hit it in the middle, is going to spin slightly to the left or slightly to the right. No two people can see the center of the ball the same. They're left eye dominant, right eye dominant. You are going to have to make an adjustment to find the true center of the cue ball. And you can think to yourself, oh, well, I should hit it 50,000 times or 5,000 times it becomes second nature. I figured this out over 50 years ago and it's not second nature. I have, it looks to me like I'm hitting the cue ball with a half a tip of right English to hit it in the exact center. As far as I can tell, the only person I've ever seen that may see the exact center is Allison Fisher. But everybody else has to make an accommodation to where the center of the cue ball is. If you can hit the cue ball in the center, in a straight line, and stop that ball dead, you will have, depending, a good player, you know, a, an average pro player can probably do it 30% of the time. That's 30 out of 100. You are probably doing it 3% of the time. 3, 4, 5 out of 100, maybe. It takes time. But once you're able to do this, you will be able to hit every cue ball, every ball where you want to hit it. When you can do this 30% of the time, stopping it dead, that means every other shot that you shoot, you're hitting exactly where you want to, and hitting the cue ball exactly where you want to, about 30% of the time. And that's entry level to the big leagues, kids. Some do, some don't, some will, and some won't. Those that do will be rewarded. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely no axis of rotation. The ball was not spinning. It wasn't rolling forward, backward, sideways. Absolutely no axis of rotation. It stopped absolutely dead. The only way that that can be done is to hit that cue ball in the center and pocket the ball is a straight line. You have to understand that the emphasis of this shot, and put that ball right back there, is not what happens to this guy making the balls a give me. It's what happens to this cue ball. 
The cue ball has no spin, no left, no right. It does not move to the left or the right. It has no axis of rotation. You have learned to hit the cue ball dead square in the center, in a straight line. So you say you don't want to do all of that work. You won't shoot that ball straight in a hundred times a day. Let me just a quick quote from uh, Burns Advanced Techniques, Pool and Billiards, you know. I know Bob Byrne, he's a good friend of mine. He's a great billiard player and a wonderful writer and historian. Now, asked about who the greatest pool player or the greatest cumin ever lived was, man. He talks about Walter Lindrum from Australia. Walter Lindrum played English billiards. And that's too complicated to explain by now, but he can make thousands in a row. And listen to this. <laughs> On the night Walter was born, his father was out playing billiards for money at the gold fields western Australia. Let's see. His father sent him out to make his other son friend a world champion, but he couldn't, he couldn't hook it. He couldn't handle it. So the father turned to Fred's younger brother, Walter, less colorful, more systematic player. One of the most interesting features of his training is, for example, for six months, Walter was only allowed to use one ball when he can leave it with precision on any part of the table, a second ball was added. One drill he had to practice for hours at a time was shooting the cue ball from a distance of about two feet into a ball frozen on the rail, making the cue ball rebound softly to its starting point. That is a double kiss, ladies and gentlemen. And that other greatest player, I mean, we got Kulins, we got Willie Hoppy, Willie Moscone, but the other greatest player mentioned in his book is a snooker player who had much the same experience, shooting the ball to a specific spot on a table by itself before adding a ball. I'm asking you to shoot a ball straight in and stop the cue ball dead to give you the power you want to become the rifleman that you need to be to play this game right. I've been living in Texas about, oh, I don't know, 15, 16 years now. When I first got here, the thing I found that was strangest about Texans, I gambled then, I don't gamble so much anymore, but they didn't post up. You bet with somebody and they acted like gentlemen, they didn't post up. So I fell in line with everybody else. And I'm playing a man, maybe 13 years ago, and I'm up to 2,000 or something, and you know, it's getting more, I, I want to see some money. I make an upside down bank play in one pocket to finish it all. And this guy tells me, he says, listen, I don't carry that kind of money with me. I need a ride to go get it. So I, I give him a ride, and the first 7-Eleven that we see, he says, pull in here. And then he looks over at me and he tells me, no matter what you see or what you hear, you be here when I come out. And he pulls a pistol out of his shirt and he walks into the 7-Eleven. I'm terrible. I ran for my life. I was just glad. I, every night I expected the knock on the door. It was a horrible experience. Then I grew to know more about this guy and this was his con. He'd done this to other people before. He takes this gun out of his pocket and it's a squirt gun and he walks through the door to 7-Eleven with this thing held high and he asks the owner, can he get some water for his son's squirt gun? Or he buys a bottle of water but he makes sure that he knows, the owner knows he's not there to rob. Boom, and I'm gone. Now the next time he sees me, he comes up to me and says, I didn't give you up. They caught me in there, armed robbery. They had me in jail for three months before I got out. I owe 20000 to a lawyer. I, owed, I still have not mentioned your name. If you can help me with the fees for the lawyer, you can help me, you know, any kind of money you give me would be all right. You know, by now I know this is a con. 
It's a pretty good one. I've never seen it before. So, of course, I don't give him anything. He still owes me $3,000. When I was younger, I would have handled it differently, but I just walked away. But can you imagine that? Every, every other human I've ever met in Texas, I've ever gambled with, I've never put up any stakes, and I've been paid every time I've won, which is once in a while, and I pay off every time I lost. But I've never seen that move before. Oof. And I don't want any of you out there trying it. And like old man Benziger said, you girls and boys be good girls and boys. Eat hot dogs, play pool.